Hello guys, in this video I will show you how you can implement your own Windows system inside your Unity projects. Uh, with this you will be able to open close these windows, drag and drop, uh, sort their display order, snap them to each other and even trap them within the screen. So to start this I have an empty scene and uh, I have only one PNG file that contains our uh, window background. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to convert it into a multiple uh, sprite. I'll first apply sprite editor. And here you can see um, multiple elements. So this was designed for our uh, strategy game, uh, Imperial Ambitions. Uh, but we won't be needing all of them. So we are interested in basically this section, which is our first sprite and our background for the window. So I created the first sprite. I drag and drop and um, this defines our um, sprite now but because it's going to be window and it's going to be resizable we need this sprite to have borders I can create these borders simply by finding these green dots at the edges and I'm going to drag this green dot until uh, from the edges until um, the whatever left at the uh, edge uh, is seamless so you can see and here is seamless top to bottom here is seamless left to right left to right and here is seamless top to bottom here I have some glossiness because of the the, the way this uh, texture is created so I cre I uh, pull this uh, edge until this glossiness is uh, left in the corner section that's basically going to make sure that glossiness repeats only once in every window. Now this is going to be my window background and also I would like to have the close button on this corner so I'm going to get another uh, sprite and now we can create our first window. Okay now I'm going to be creating our first UI element which is the panel. So I'm going to go here UI and I'm going to choose the panel. Now, since there is an already a canvas and event system, they will be automatically created as well. What the event system does is basically it, uh, uh, for the mouse events to be registered and the canvas is for drawing or overlaying uh, these UI elements to the main, uh, main camera. Now, if I double click the canvas, I'll have a general look of how it looks. Uh, here I have, I'll click the panel. Panel is going to be our actual window. So I'm going to resize this to a more reasonable window size. So that's probably, considering this canvas displays the whole screen, this window size is, depends on what you want to do, um, seems to be enough for me. And then we're going to set the background, uh, the default background, and change it with our um, uh, background image. Uh, also, the, the panel system comes with an, the image uh, component that has a color where the alpha channel is set to 100. This defines the transparency of the window. So whether, uh, whatever you set is up to you, but I'm going to set it to 255, which is opaque. I have my first window and you can see changing the size doesn't distort the image. Uh, that's basically because this is set to slice, slice mode. If it was simple, it will be uh, it will be stretched. Uh, if it was set to tiled, it will again work the way we want. Or sliced again, it works the way we want. So um, it's gonna it's not gonna make much difference. So um, there is our first window, and let's call it uh, window. Not now let's start with creating um, our script which call it window UI so let's start with one by one uh, giving a, a drag and drop ability so for that I'm going to be needing using unity engine dot event systems and because event systems has an interface I drag handler. 
There are several things that we can use here. I'm going to drag handler. This is going to, um, this interface has the, the on drag event, which will be called when the event system um, notices that it's being dragged. So I'll, I, what I did is I, uh, I'm, I entered the uh, on drag event, which comes with an event data. Um, and I have to fill it. I have to remove this one. Otherwise it's, it will throw an implement exception. I'll enter here. Um, what's going, whether it's going to happen when it, uh, it's being dragged. Now, what I want to do, um, obviously, uh, I want to know when I start dragging and, uh, when I, um, I, I can continue dragging. So for that, I believe. I need to have a, you know, the, the moment I start dragging is going to when the, the mouse power pointer is going to uh, press. So for that, I also need an um, uh, another interface, which is I pointer down, which I'll right click. So now I click, so when I, I'll just move over and then the show potential fixes. In here it says on pointer down. Uh, I'll show potential fixes and can come with either either one of them is it does the same thing. I'll use the implement interface, so I'll have the on pointer down event here. Now I'll zoom in a little bit to make things more clear for you. So I'm gonna fill it these these two. So what's gonna happen is we I want to um the I want to have a position of this um. Uh, wherever this uh, position is saved so um, and then however much we drag it's gonna um, um, it's gonna move according to that so we do vector vector 3 um, mouse drag start position and on point down our strike start position is going to uh, be uh, where the input um, mouse position minus the transform transforms local position. Uh, so this windows local position, and that's going to be saved here. And then um, while I'm dragging, uh, I want to update the position. Uh, transform local position is going to be the current mouse position minus um, I think we're gonna subtract the drag position and this should be enough to actually drag and drop our uh, window let's give it a try Okay, there you go. And I can see, can see, I can drag and drop my window now. Can check this. If you can see, see, you can see there's no performance impact whatsoever. All right. Now, uh, one more thing to show that uh, I can at the moment do that with right mouse button, left mouse button, even middle mouse button. Uh, so if you have a preference, you know, you just want to move uh, with a specific mouse button, then we have to include that. We have to check for that actual mouse bu uh, button is happening. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to define that, you know, I'm going to check um, if the mouse, uh, if, if the particular mouse button is pressed. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to have, um, uh, uh, public pointer event data dot input button. So this actually defines which button is 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 going to be used. So uh, target mouse button button, and I can have a default value here. But uh, if I save you will see here in the window that it is left 
which we can also use it as a default, but you don't need to do uh, left makes sense. So we're going to make sure that uh, the event data here is where you're using the event data now. Event data button is actually uh, this target mouse button. Target mouse button. Actually, we can rename this to something else like like um, drag mouse button. That makes more sense. Okay, so we're going to say if this is true, then we will want to define this. And same will go with that one. So copy, control C, control V. And now it should not work with right mouse button. Let's give it a try. So left mouse button right mouse button middle no not working left mouse button only okay so there you go we have the dragging and dropping already uh, set up what's the next thing we want to add um uh, why not add our close button which is not going to we won't have to do it inside the the script we're going to add the close button right at the corner so what I'm going to do is I'm going to remember if we had we had this uh, close button um, here. Come to window, right click UI and select button. And it automatically creates a button should be in the middle yeah, here. We don't want it here. We want it at the corner. So I'm going to click on the um, uh, rec transform uh, position and I'm going to set it on the top right. I'm going to use that using an alt button. So when I click it, it will move to the move there. And the button also has a text. I don't want the text. It's just going to be the X. So I'll go back to the button. I'm going to change the image with uh, the X now. And this is going to be simple. We don't need to slice it or anything. We just set native size. To set the size, I'm going to have to click Alt here. And there you go. This is it's perfectly positioned there. And what I want to do next is I want to change the button. Now, at the moment, it already has um, the normal color is nothing changed. The highlighted could be, you know, it could be more red or, or maybe yellowish color. Then pressed should be maybe a bit darker than this. And there you go. And select and disable pretty much. We're not going to be needing those. Um, let's try at the moment how it looks. Okay, it is it is very, very small. Let's zoom in. Oh, zooming would help. Okay. I'll probably have to center. Center. I can have the color change slightly. That's fine. But what it needs to do, it needs to close the window. So basically the window element, window UI, all it needs to do to, to, to turn turn off is just to set up this on and off. So if we make sure that the button does close it, that's fine. It, of, of course, the opening has to do happens from somewhere else because the button will also disappear along with it. So what I'm going to do is the, in the button, there is on click event. Uh, I'm going to choose here and it's runtime only. I want to choose the window game object. I'll drag the window game object here. And then I'm going to set the game object. And so the game object, it's set active and set active. Leave this empty. This what what, what is it though? It just makes, you know, it closes the window. Technically, that's all it does. Okay. The, the window looks too small. I can re change the size. Just all I need to do is select the texture, and the texture has a pixel per unit. Thirty-two. Okay. And we set it to thirty-two, so everything inside should become thirty-two size, except this one. The button needs to resize, so I need to choose the, res the button and then click on the set native size, and there you go. And I'll click here and then hold the Alt key. And choose this one to reposition it. There you go. So, there 
There you go. It's moving around. And this is doing itself. Well, turning off itself. Okay, so <laughs> the next thing we can do is to make sure it is trapped within the screen. We're going to trap the window inside the screen using the script. Uh, we're not going to be using starter update, I think. So we can delete them now. What I want to do is this is going to trap it while dragging. So that we're going to call, we're going to make sure that happens inside on drag. Um, but actually we can make sure that this, we can have another function that's going to man manage all this. So let's call it public. It doesn't even have to be public. Let's call it private um, void uh, trap to screen. There you go. So we have a function that's going to trap it inside the screen. What it does, if it is exceeding the screen in one any of the edges, it's going to move it uh, the necessary amount. What I'm going to do is I'm going to find the position, the minimum position of the window, or like the leftmost and the topmost position of the window, the rightmost and the bottommost position of the window, and then store them in two different vectors, and then see how close they are to the border. Um, and depending on certain limit, we can make sure that it's gonna it's gonna snap in place. So for that, I'm going to define a vector three if min and I'm going to use the rec transform I need, I need to I need the rec transform uh, the to to uh, if I call transform it is already defined but uh, this is a window this is a UI window so it has a rec transform which is um, um, which is inherited from transform object but it is not defined here, so as you can see, it doesn't exist. So I'm going to do that here. What I'm going to do, I'm going to put a, a rec transform and call it rec transform in a small letter. And then on awake, I'm going to rec transform is going to be cast from transform. That means that I, whatever I use this script, it has to be a UI element that has a rec transform. Otherwise, this is going to give an error. But that's fine because all the windows are UI elements. So I'm going to use the rec transform position. Um, this gives me a vector three. And I'm going to add the rec transforms it, the, this rec transform itself has a rectangle and the center of the rectangle uh, is stored on inside rec transform rect um, position. So I, I can understand they, they, they look like the same, but this is the, the position in, in the world and this is the position inside within its rectangle, which is always the center. This change depending on the size of the rectangle. Um, but this returns a vector three, so I want to convert it to vector uh, three. I, I don't think there is a uh, two vector three option. No, we can maybe cast it to vector three. Yeah, we can cast to vector three and start like this. And I also want to do the same um, vector three if max. And in this case, it's going to be like this. However, I want to subtract that from maximum X and Y uh, positions, which are defined by the, the, the screen. So I'm going to use camera.main. This is actually not something that people prefer, but we have to do that here. Uh, but since it's going to be only working during dragging, that's that's fine. Um, pixel rect uh, size which is vector three. So I have to cast it to vector uh, vector three. Is it vector two? I have to cast the vector three. Um, vector three. 
minus director disposition uh, and this time a plus okay it's, it's really hard to pick here and plus this was this this one this will give us the the difference from the the from the edge of the window to the maximum point in the camera. So I'm going to check all these to find the distance. So it's going to be basic. So if, for example, if min dot x is less than um, let's call it border snap uh, floats. So it's like, you know, public float uh, border snap size and should be it should be enough uh, not float it's going to be in so it's by by pixels um so if it's less than border snap size uh then we what we're going to do we're going to move the rec transform position by the amount of a new vector if min x so it's basically if it is less than certain amount it's going to move to um, add to that uh, well subtract in this case so that it's going to be moved uh, towards inside the screen i'm going to do that four times which is you know, doesn't sound right to be doing something four times like with very small differences I, I guess that should work. That should be okay. Position and this time again, um, subtract new vector and this will zero. If min y and f. So we move again. And if the uh, the other side, if if min max is less than ten or not, ten border size, same size. Oh, sorry. Oh, X. Step size and then rec transform position. And this time it is plus equal. Now, uh, just to remind that plus equal or minus equal means that add or subtract uh, that amount and assign. So what it does is it subtracts this value from this and then assigns back to the position. Let's continue. What three? And if max dot x zero f zero, and we're gonna be doing this again this time for y. Back transform position plus equals new vector zero f if max y zero. F. And we want the trap to screen function to be called inside or drag. Yeah. So I'm going to do this if it's being dragged. So let's move it here and then call it here. Trap to screen. I'm going to save and let's have to see if that's going to work as we expect. So I can move and when I bring it to the edge, it snaps there, it doesn't go anywhere. Perfect. Now, sometimes we can have more than one window and we, we, want, we want, want to snap them to each other as well. So, um, in that case, we have to actually, during dragging, we have to go through all those windows and they look at their position and then uh, do a similar snapping to make sure that they're going to snap to each other's edges. Uh, so to do that, we're going to be going back here and then we can call a private void snap each other. Each other. Right. So this is going to make sure that they're going to snap each other. Now, Check this. I want to store all the the window elements in one place. 
so that I won't have to find uh, all the windows in the scene. So to do that, I'm going to create a hash set, a static object, a static hash set of uh, window UIs, all windows, let's call it, and um, going to be an empty one, like that. And then during a week, we want to we want to add, actually, uh, yeah, during a week, we want to add um, all windows that add this. So this window will be added there. And then every time we are um, update where we are checking if uh, you know checking the snapping to each other, we can go to this list and uh, see if they are active. And if they are active, then we can. Uh, see that if they are uh, close enough to the borders are close enough to snap and for that we're going to be going back to the snap each other uh, function okay so what we're going to do we're going to iterate through all those windows right so for each um, window UI let's call it window win in all windows and we're going to snap it only if that window is um, uh, is uh, active and of also that window is not this window. So if um, win is this, if this is that window, then we don't need to worry about anything. So we just continue. That means it will go to the next window. But if that is not the case, and then we can check if that window uh, is active. So we're going to go to its game object and active self or active in hierarchy. Um, either one is fine. Actually, active in hierarchy makes more sense um, in hierarchy because that means it will definitely be active. And then we're going to do calculate just like here above. Uh, we're going to do vector three uh, if min um, win rec transform pollution minus. Now, the difference here is we have um, this window and the other window, and both windows have a center. So I'm going to subtract. I'll find a difference. Window rec transform rec position minus. Actually, let's put um, we, we need to add them to each other. Uh, this rec minus rec trans rec transform dot rec position. This is going to uh, plus. Um, and this is going to return vector two and to cast it to vector three. And then we'll continue by subtracting the rec transform dot position itself. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we're casting the, the total size of the windows, the, the half size of the windows. And uh, we're subtracting the positions of the windows, and that will give us the min minimum um, difference. And we're going to do the same thing vector 3 if, if max, which is going to be win. So it's pretty much the same, uh, except in this case, we are going to be adding the, uh, the total size the half size of the windows next we'll do the same thing if um uh, now the difference is in this case we can actually have a negative difference uh, for that reason we have to check the absolute uh, in this case math f dot absolute if dot if min dot x is smaller than 
border snap size then rec transform position plus equal new vector 3 if min not x 0 0 but pretty much we're going to be repeating this for y of course this has to be on the y-axis and we're going to repeat this set for the uh, if max as well in case if max is less than that then we're going to be adding um, max x and if x y is less than that now we're going to make in max y and then we're going to call this function every time uh, we're dragging so it might be a costly nap each other okay so let's give it a try so i'm gonna create a new window and then move it like this and here i'm moving doesn't seem to be snapping it is snapping in the borders it's snapping at the uh y-axis okay the y-axis seems to be working it, ah here is working yeah and let's try this way oh it's working yeah it snaps here so i can easily put them together snap them on the corners that's that's yeah and ideally let's put it in the middle if i turn this off close this this should no longer be affected by the end yeah that's exactly what we're seeing and then turn it back on and there you go it snaps okay um the question is did we cover all those things we want to do we can open and close well we can close at this and opening could be depending on another another button on the main uh, ui we can drag and drop Ah, and we want to sort their order. So, for example, if one is here uh, behind the other window, we want this to go, you know, you know, uh, go above the other one. Um, so we want this. Since we're clicking, we want it to go above this window, um, which is really easy. We're gonna go to UI window again, and since we have a pointer down handler. We can add another function and another uh, thing here pointed down um what could be left mouse button right mouse button it doesn't matter whichever i think it should not matter um what we're going to be doing is we're going to bring that window to the front by simply moving the the, the game object to the end of the the sibling list so um i'm gonna go game object transform actually just go transform transform set as the last sibling and that's that's all we need to do let's give it a try now so here and here you can see the the sibling order switching so if i move it here it's on the top and then if i click on this one now this is on the top and that easy ah, that's that's that easy so uh there you go we are like they're, they're stepping each other they're uh, trapped inside the the screen um their sort order can be changed we can drag and drop we can uh, open and close and that's a very simple window system for your um unit projects
thank you for listening and hope to see you in the next video. Good luck with your projects. Oh, oh and please subscribe.